PAX East has come and gone, showcasing some great games by passionate developers, releasing in the near future, hopefully. I didn't get a chance to play every game that looked interesting, but I was able to talk to quite a few developers and sample a healthy chunk, like Silent Slayer, Vault of the Vampire, one of the very few VR games being showcased. Think of it like Surgeon Simulator meets horror. You're solving puzzles in order to slay a vampire, but you've got to keep your hands steady like a surgeon. Make too much noise and you're a goner. I had a lot of fun with this one. It had great atmosphere and could make for a really fun game to play, especially with parties as people take turns. When I started, I grabbed the stake and stabbed it against the table, immediately making too much noise. My brain and shaky hands made this game extra difficult, but I really love the direction they're headed with this. No Steam page or release date for this one yet, but I'll leave a link to the developer's website down below. Almost every single game included in this video has a Steam page and is available to wishlist. I'll have links down below for every single one, and if a game sounds interesting to you, consider adding it to your wishlist. Even if you can't afford to play it or have too much in your backlog, a wishlist is super helpful for developers you want to support, as it tells Steam that demand is high and they're more likely to promote it. So consider wishlisting a game if you want to help it succeed. It really makes a difference. Moving on next to Ollie Frog Toad Skater, a bubbly and colorful homage to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, with that love immediately being felt in the controls. The buttons on the gamepad and the demo matched perfectly with the classic Pro Skater controls, so if you're at all familiar, you'll be able to hop right in with no trouble. It's got a great aesthetic, the skating felt a little more floaty, but still pretty good, and your frog is customizable. Also, this has a demo on Steam available right now, so download the demo if you want to feel it out for yourself. Any fan of Pro Skater knows that the feeling is the most important part of the fun for these games. Next, I'd like to highlight a game that was being presented by student developers from the Game Design Initiative at Cornell University. Bubblegum Bandit by Crested Gecko Studios is a pretty neat little puzzler. It's free to play on Steam right now, and you use a gun to stop enemies and solve puzzles involving platforming and changing gravity. It's simple and can be a little janky, but it's clever, and it's nice to see some of the student projects that were being showcased at PAX. This was my favorite one that I sampled, so if you want a fun little puzzler to spend an afternoon or evening with, then I recommend this. It's a great showcase for what I hope leads to promising game development careers for all those involved. Moving on to some tabletop action is Soul Forge Fusion, a card game designed by the one and only Richard Garfield, creator of Magic the Gathering. I've never played Magic, and I'm not the biggest card game guy, though I have a lot of fun with them whenever I try them out. And Soul Forge was interesting. It had a unique mechanic that involved cards evolving as the match progressed, so there's a lot of strategy involving what cards you play, but also when you decide to play them. There's a roguelite campaign mode that's reminiscent of Slay the Spire, and the game's also being created for the tabletop as well. Buying a physical card pack will also come with a digital code that can be used for the Steam game. If you're a fan of Magic the Gathering, you may find your next addiction in Soulforge Fusion. No release date yet, but there's a demo available on Steam if that sounds like your vibe. Eye-catching is the best phrase I can think to describe this next one. This is Part of You, a puzzle adventure game that involves interacting with different characters and facial features to solve puzzles. It's a little hard to fully describe, but the charming sense of humor and character designs drew me in immediately. Speaking with the developers, they told me about the sheer amount of work that went into creating the world, involving somewhere around 800 completely different facial features that were created and mixed and matched around to assemble the characters of the world. When I first saw this game and its mechanics, I was immediately reminded of Stick It to the Man for anyone who remembers that little gem. If you love little puzzle adventure games with a unique world and wacky characters, then I think Part of You is perfect for you. There's a demo available right now if you'd like to check it out. And this game actually just released during PAX Weekend. So if you enjoy the demo, consider giving this a shot. I plan on playing it very soon, and I may review the game if it's something that would be of interest. Even if you can't afford the game, remember to wishlist, as it's incredibly helpful for the developers. Zombie Rollers The Last Ship is a super polished little tower defense survival game that involves piloting your vehicle to crush zombies, earn cash, and upgrade your defenses. I got an immediate sense of satisfaction and addiction from the game, and loved the potential for customization. No release date from the developers, but they did mention plans for PC and a Switch release, which I think would suit this game perfectly. It's incredibly polished, and if you're into addictive survival type games or tower defense type games, then I imagine you'll have a great time with this one. Athenian Rhapsody immediately caught my attention with the bright and colorful pixel art that reminded me of some of my favorite games from the Game Boy Advance. This game is stunning, especially all the character art. All done by a solo developer who's been working at the game for three years now. Speaking with Nico Papalia, he talked about how much he loved working on the characters and their animations, and it shines through. But aside from the visuals, I actually found this game to be super chaotic and funny. It wears its inspirations proudly on its sleeve, but I found a level of confidence within the game's writing and personality that's missing in many indie RPGs. I could see how some may find this game to be initially derivative or familiar of other works, like Earthbound or Undertale, but after trying the demo for myself, I found a chaotic originality to it that 
drew me in, and the writing had me grinning through the whole demo. If this kind of quirky RPG is your vibe, then I think you may find your next obsession here. The game is near complete and expected to release within the next couple of months, but if you can't wait that long, there's a demo available for this one too. Here's hoping Nico can stick the landing with this one. Next up is a chaotic love letter to action 2D platformers with Anton Blast. Some games struggle to have an energetic and flashy demo to present that immediately hooks players. Anton Blast does not have this problem. Another game with visuals that harkens back to the glorious pixel art of the Game Boy Advance. This high-octane action platformer is sure to be a great time, with unique level design, sound, and some killer music. I initially couldn't play this at PAX due to how crowded the booths were for it, but thankfully I had a similar demo available on Steam. This could easily be my favorite indie action platformer of 2024, after Pizza Tower in 2023. Check out the demo if you're at all interested. Also, the spinning jump sound effect sounds like it's straight out of Metroid. I'd be shocked if that wasn't an intentional reference. Why do we talk to each other? Kind Words 2 is the sequel to Kind Words, an interesting little indie gem that I'd never heard of before. Think of it like an anonymous online message board. There's no numbers to quantify or rank anything, just messages. You can answer letters online from people, asking for help or guidance, and you can write whatever you like to the world. There's even an option to just write to nothing, scream whatever you want into the void. If you had just mentioned this game to me, I would have thought it a gimmick, but listening to the developers and seeing the demo right in front of me helped me see what kind of experience this game could offer. If you're in need of something that allows you to wear your heart on your sleeve, without the risk and blowback that comes from the real world, then Kind Words 2 should be on your wish list. No release date yet, but there is an option to sign up for an early playtest. And if you're a fan of the original, there's backwards compatibility with the first game. Airborne Empire is an open world city builder set on building your perfect city in the sky to explore and discover. I was curious about the setting and how the switch to the sky could add interesting gameplay mechanics and opportunities for a city builder. I was unsure of the game at first, until I saw the developer at attach a new building to the city, resulting in the whole city tilting slightly in one direction. From that point, it felt like a light bulb turned on in my brain. I would love that. The use of the sky also leads to a mobile city, involving a city builder with an emphasis on exploration too. The game's expected to release an early access in the next couple of months, but if you can't wait, their previous game, Airborne Kingdom, is available now. If you're into city builders and can't wait for Airborne Empire, you might find a lot to love in Airborne Kingdom. Before we move on to our final game and my favorite of the show, let's go through a quick highlight of some other games that I either didn't get a chance to check out or maybe weren't to my tastes, but they may very well be perfect for you. All of these games are available to wishlist on Steam, so please do so if they pique your interest. Finally, my favorite game of the show is... Fretless The Wrath of Rifson is a turn-based RPG with card game battle mechanics set in a world that's dedicated to music, specifically the guitar and bass at least from what I've seen so far. The chill pixel art drew me in, and I loved the incredible character expressions and animations. The music's an obvious highlight, and my weakness. I'm not a technical music person, but I am a big fan of music-themed games. There's attention to detail in Fretless that's even more apparent for any guitar aficionados. A small development team has been working at it for about two years now and are hoping to release the game within 2024. The interface is charming and the music was addicting, with the battle theme changing depending on the type of instrument you use. Each instrument has different selectable attacks to mix and match together, and you always use three attacks per turn, so the order of attacks is also important to consider. I only got a brief taste of this world, but I have a great feeling about the direction and the developers sounded very proud to show off their hard work. Fretless has a demo available on Steam right now, so go check it out. I think it'll charm you the way it did for me. PAX East was an incredible showcase this year, and there were so many games I wish I could have checked out. If you have any favorites that I missed, let me know. And if you're a developer who was at PAX, don't hesitate to let me know about your game too. I'd love to check it out. Learning about new indies and talented teams gives me hope that for every awful AAA bloated release, we get charming little adventures that highlight the full extent of this industry's creativity.